Hi, uh, Ashwarya ma'am. Hi. Hello. This is Titash from News 18. Uh, my question is, uh, of course, we are in awe of you after we watched you on the screen. You look lovely, ethereal. I would want to know what was uh, your daughter Aradhya's reaction when she saw you as a queen? She has yet to see the movie. But of course, I mean, uh, uh, at the time, um, she was, um, I'm sure, enthralled. And uh, it's, uh, I mean, there are many here who have children. And uh, you know, seeing a period drama is always exciting. And uh, she did get the opportunity uh, to visit on set. And uh, just, it, it was mesmerizing. I could, I could see that in her eyes. But uh, I think my admiration for working with him, she already has the, a very, very, uh, ve she, she respects him. She's in awe of him. And his affection is so sweet. And I think what excited her the most is the one day when she came on set. And um, he gave her the opportunity to say, <laughs> action. She couldn't get over that. She's like, <gasps> Sir, gave me the opportunity to say that. I said, my God, even we are going, ah, I don't think any of us have had that opportunity. Huh? None of us have had that opportunity. So that's probably the most cherished memory. I said, this is really precious. And um, uh, she values it already. And I think with growing years, more so. It will be a much cherished memory. Right. And uh, my second question is, uh, how much of uh, Aishwarya Rai Bachchan do we see in this character that you play in the film? A sincere student who uh, earnestly has interpreted uh, Mr. Mani Ratnam's vision. I think that's that's really uh, our job as an actor. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Hi, Sanjay Mishra from Navarat Times Online. Rehman sir, se request that you have to say 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 that <laughs> Clever, good. Uh, I don't have the lyrics, but I can do the Tamil version. Ponni na di pakano me. Ira riya samari. Katta pola. Ira riya samari. Kanik pengal kano no me. Ira riya samari. Katta. Kya baat? 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 Kya एक तो बहुत एपिक फिल्म है तो इसकी बहुत सारी कहानियां होंगी कई दशकों से आप ये फिल्म बनाना चाहते थे जब आप पहले बनाना चाहते थे क्या आपको याद है कास्टिंग क्या आपने सोची थी अगर आपको लगता है कि समय लोगों से ये शेयर करना चाहिए और मजेदार होगा वो किस्सा तो प्लीज आप शेयर करें Now, like I told you, you know, this is film that MGR, MG Ramachandran wanted to make and he had a set of cast. And then later, when I thought of this, it was uh, after the film called Nayagan that I've done with Kamal, we both wanted to do this film. So at that time, we hadn't started casting. We just had Kamala Hassan as the hero. And uh, we were working on the script. And it didn't, you know, it didn't get materialized because it was too big. We couldn't put it into a single film and it, uh, we couldn't afford it. So we left it back. So that's what the history is. Hi, this is Hi. Komal Panchal from Indian Express. Uh, my question is for uh, Mani Ratnam, sir. Here. Uh, sir, uh, with. Uh, PS1, uh, it's like a window to uh, Tamil history for the West and the North parts of India. Uh, you know, when we make such big historical films, uh, when, uh, you know, there is a trend at times where history is tweaked a little to satiate a... Uh, have to uh, recognize um, respect and acknowledgement of history is what takes us forward, you know, and you learn, you unlearn, and then you relearn again. And uh, as Sir said, uh, the, the politics of it all, the, the human um, journey of every character, that is um, eternal, that's relevant 
even to date and up ahead because every uh, uh, every character is uh, is human and human conflict human um, emotional journeys the roller coaster of what what you go through irrespective of the uh, situation in which you're, you you come from that that is something that's relatable and relevant at every point in time can i add Thank that you. uh sure. so we are actually north india south india in a way right half the people know about the cholas through this movie already through the trailer they can spell what chola means so that's an important statement and even for the present generation to know the greatness of what existed 1000 years back is very important for them to get their self esteem and to know where to go from mm -hmm. here not uh, you know celebrating the past but what they could do what they are capable of and to finding themselves so yeah thank, thank you may thank i add you. to that please sure sure, sure. sorry <laughs> you got all of us excited uh, see, the, everybody has interest. There will be people who, have, who like science, astronomy, geography, history. But I think the most important thing is history. As children, all of us have listened to stories of the past. Whether it's Chandamama. Do you have Chandamama in Hindi? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, whatever. Uh, all those are stories we hear. We've been told stories about the past, about kings, about our... We've had such an illustrious past. Just a small thing just that I want to bring to your notice. We all talk about the pyramids and how could they have possibly built it? How did they do it so many years ago? But do you know that in India, we have so many temples, but the highest, the one with the highest gopuram is there in, in um, Tanjavur, which is where the Chola dynasty had happened, and his role, Raja Raja Cholan, had built it. That particular temple has the highest gopuram in the whole world. The top stone alone, it's a single stone that weighs 80 tons. 80 tons, not one ton or two tons. And how did they do it? But do we know that? We all go to the pyramids, we go see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Someone said something very nicely. He said, we are actually appreciating a building that doesn't stand. It's falling over and wow, let's take a picture, let's take a selfie, and we're getting excited. But we have temples today that stand and they didn't use plaster. Do you know that the, for this particular stone, they had to use a ramp, which was six kilometers long, which was pulled by bulls, elephants, and people. Six kilometers long to get it up there, without any machinery, without any cranes, without any, anything. And they didn't have plaster. It's withstood six earthquakes. You know what happens when an earthquake comes without plaster. What they have done is they have an outer wall. Then inside that, they have a corridor of six feet, which is an open, just a corridor. And then they have another structure inside, which goes all the way to the top, which is why they can withstand earthquakes, which is why they stood so long. So these are all things that we need to know about. This particular king has built 5,000 dams in his time. And he's made a water management ministry in that time. He's had elections for the village leaders. He's, he's asked them to name cities after women. Why should it only be men? Why can't it be named after a queen? And they've had hospitals, free hospitals, and, uh, they've g oh. and, and he actually brought loans. I mean, he used to give loans. He used to help people get dignity, not just throw money around. So this is something that's so illustrious. And this happened in the ninth century. I'm sorry, I'm taking so much time. No, it happened in the ninth century when the rest of the world, you talk about superpowers today, the 9th century, all this happened when we had the biggest maritime f uh, 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 naval thing in, in the world. And it went all the way to Bali, all the way to Malaysia, and went till we sent emissary, emissaries to Ch China. China. And you know what was the superpower doing then? America hadn't been discovered by Columbus till 500 years <laughs> later. So think about our culture. Think about how advanced we were. We need to be proud of this. It's nothing to do with North India, South India, West India, East India. It is, we are Indians. And we, I mean, we need to feel proud about that. And yeah, England, so England is so illustrious. But England's were invaded by the Vikings. And the Europe was in the dark ages during the 9th century. They had nothing going on. So don't you think we should celebrate history? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Manisa. I need watch up, please. <laughs> Manisa, I got two questions for you here. Harshida here. Uh, sir, one thing is that, how did you manage to get the galaxy of the actors in one frame? I'm very curious as in... He paid us a lot of money. I'm sure about it, but there must be something behind the camera. How did you manage to get them in one frame? Uh, you just have to ask them, give them a role, tell them this is the character, this is a book, you want to do it, I would like to do it, I said, told them. So, I would have done anything to get them. Yeah. <laughs> they get money. <laughs> <laughs> it's an easy yes for him. 
he just has to call in everybody very easily and happily says yeah. yes. That's the truth. Sure, <laughs> he asked sure, two questions. Do you want money or do you want money? <laughs> say money any day. <laughs> sir, already money. sir, my second question is that, uh, how did you uh, place that Aishwarya ji will be playing this character, Vikram ji will be playing that character? You left to them or that is your idea that uh, he should play this and that actor should play that character? I can't ask them to exchange the roles. <laughs> <laughs> no, just for example, like how did you yeah, place yeah, I them? Yeah, I understand. I understand what you're asking. No, I think when you approach an actor, you approach with a character in mind. You think he or she will be right for it, and therefore that is why you approach. You approach them not for a film, but for a character. And uh, if they are able to be on sync with the character, and if they like it, and if they have the time, then it's a, it becomes perfect. Hi, uh, uh, I just have one more question. Uh, this is for Trisha. Uh, Trisha, over here. Uh, can you see? Hi, hi, I am well, thank you. Yeah. So obviously you're playing uh, Princess Kundavi. I hope, uh, I hope I got the pronunciation right. Kundavai. Oh, Kundavai. I'm so sorry for that. Uh, but obviously I think she's uh, said to be a woman of courage and as we've seen a little bit in the trailer. Uh, given the times uh, that we live in today, you know, uh, especially on the, uh, with the issues of women's uh, security, uh, you know, would you like to give some tip, uh, you know, to the women out there, you know, on, uh, you know, how to have courage? So, you know, a, a lot of people asked me, uh, actually told me, playing Kundavai would have been so different for you because it's a woman who belongs to that era and you've played characters which are a pretty strong and a very, you know, today's woman. But besides the physicality of the character, I could totally relate to Kundava even though she belonged to a totally different era because she by herself is very, very empowered. And to be honest, we come from a blessed generation where, I mean, I'm, I feel very empowered today, but in that era, it was very, very difficult. I mean, a woman even voicing something in a kingdom where the men would be like, who is she to just walk into a kingdom and say this, you know? Um, so that was one part of Kundavai that I took from today because I could really relate to it. She's very strong, very empowered, and that's what I loved about Kundavai because I was playing a today's woman dressed differently, set in that era. So mind-wise, it was very similar. It's just that the appearance was very different.